going to be an artist, you know, did you know from a young age? Well, I, I was, you know, my mom was an art teacher, so I was probably a little predisposed, but um, she would give us projects to do to keep us busy, and maybe that was all I wanted to do after that. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I just know that at one point in time I entered an art contest that she told me to enter, and I, and I won, and so after that point I kind of started thinking like, hmm. Maybe there's something to it. Maybe <laughs> being an artist is legitimate. You know, that's like first or second grade. So, <laughs> one of the first pieces I saw of yours was the uh, the iPod sculpture. Right. And the first thing I thought was Warhol's soup can, and kind of how that shocked people. I mean, what is your thinking uh, taking these very modern objects and turning them into uh, recreated art objects? Uh, is there any? motivation behind that or concept for you? Um, well, I mean, of course, like once an object enters the group consciousness to the point where it's easily recognizable as what it is, you know, there's a certain power there that you can tap into. And the, the, with the iPod, it's part of a series, you know, I'm making all sorts of objects from the chopped up money to convert the money, which makes society flow into the objects that eventually are created and moved. You know, it's very metaphoric. Um, but to use something like an iPod, is obviously a small slice of who knows where it's going to go, but right now at least it's definitely an icon. You know, and I didn't pick the iPod Touch because it wouldn't have read the same way. It's just that one final moment where the iPod shape with that disc wheel and the circle and the screen seemed to make sense. And I, I decided to kind of lock it in time, I guess. The Talk a little future. bit more about the money aspect of it, that you're making it out of chopped up money, you said? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm pretty much exclusively chopping up coins, uh, American coins, and using epoxy to build them into these objects. So uh, it's just money, it's just the epoxy, and there's no structure. The money becomes the object. It's not like I'm covering an object with the coins, but I'm making it look as if I could have covered the object with the coins. Um, yeah, the money's important for me. This is so important for us. You know, it's what we, it's what we eat and breathe. <laughs> Almost, we don't quite breathe it yet. But talk a little bit more about the relationship between the finished objects and the objects you make the objects out of. Because right. uh, as I looked at your art, there were a lot of different variations, and they yeah, seemed to have a lot of meaning. Phase after phase, I always like to think of it as an evolution, and growing process, to where one line of exploration leads to the next and uh, definitely gone through phases where like I said when I was growing up I was making junk sculpture and making creatures out of junk and learning a technique to work with it that way but then eventually morphed into using more other kinds of found objects. I went through a period where I was using a lot of dolls where people started giving me the dolls. I used them once and then people started giving them to me like so many that I don't even know what I'm going to do with them so I start trying to use them up and uh, then I start to be defined as the doll part artist, which I didn't really want to be defined as, so I started to try to explore and do other things, and um, eventually, instead of finding objects, I started selecting objects. So I started building things more from an object that made sense in terms of the metaphor, um, and that was a transition from the dolls, because when I was using the dolls, I had to reach a point where I started to do that, like the credit card piece that I made was mm. a final usage of the dolls that made more sense because I was chopping up arms and legs to describe my frustration with the credit card debt, credit card companies, all these things I wasn't going to escape. Um, and that was supposedly my final doll piece. And after that transition into using army guys, because Bush was in office, and I had this whole feeling of like, we're being turned into this war country, and how do I react with that? And so I started using the army guys to try to share the country's goal by creating these body parts and things like that. But then the money came into play after the most previous election where uh, uh, the economic crisis unfolded as that was happening. And it seemed like the war was not so as important after that election and after the financial collapse. I switched to the money at that point, conscious effort, effort because of that. Now, I was looking at the piece that was a dollar bill, and I think that was made out of that the was army. Out of the now. army, yeah. yeah now, so. is there anything more you can tell me about that piece and what the relationship meant to you? Yeah, that's like I said, during the Bush era, I had this feeling that we were investing all of our time and effort into this war machine, and it seemed to be intrinsically leaked, linked to money. So, making the dollar bill from the army guys um, was a way for me to really describe that in such a fashion as that it was locked in time, you know, 
for people to remember. And the serial number on the dollar bill was actually 2000, uh, 2008. There's eight numbers. So, you know, and then all the other little pieces of information in there. It was like the GW, I think, and F was the series, and there was zero was for all the numbers. You know, it was all sorts of like little hidden references to, to, to what this meant. And even the signature of the, the Secretary of the Treasury was just guns, just handguns, you know, because it didn't even matter to me what that signature, to try to make the signature look the right way, I was like, what does it matter? I just make it out of guns, because I'm trying to tell the people of the future that this is what we did with our time and effort, this is how we, how we invest ourselves, and uh, that's what I actually do. One thing in your website I thought was interesting that you categorized, categorized your art into Bush era and Obama era, mm -hmm. could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, you know, I knew when I was in college, I went to college from, I guess, 94 until about 2002 for my undergrad. And during that period, I was um, making art that was just kind of objects, um, creatures, things like that. And I got this idea from one of my college professors that there has to be some meaning in there and what does it mean and stuff. And I started thinking about that. I was like, okay, I think that that makes sense. I think I want to make art that has meaning. And I was trying to figure out what the meaning would be. And then, of course, when the terrorists attacked uh, 2001, the whole country changed and everything. I was like, okay, now there's a purpose. Now making art with a meaning uh, is not just going through the motion to feel like you have to do it. I felt like I was given a reason to make art with a meaning and um, my art after that point was a lot more reflect self-reflection, reflecting on what we do as a society you know, and, and what affects us all. And, especially the things that frustrate me, how I come to terms with them um, by capturing it in art and sharing that moment of capturing it. It's obviously a very long, extended moment. You know, people see that and, and they feel like uh, it's a kind of relationship to it. I think it can help people who are also frustrated to, to feel like they're not alone. And, you know, there's the off chance that it might change somebody who wasn't frustrated with it before into becoming frustrated with it when they see something that's undeniably intelligent, describing something that's undeniably unintelligent, but then all of a sudden they might just say, oh well, obviously I should side with the artist, because <laughs> it makes more sense. Could you talk a little bit about your religion series? Uh, when I looked at that, right. I mean, some of it was scary, but some of it also had kind of like a Star Wars yeah, feel yeah, to that, it. that brings back to mind. I was trying to remember from way back then why it was I was making art with, with a meaning and how, how that worked. And I was taking a lot of art history in college. And so you start to get context of, I'm an artist, I'm going to be an artist. We have our own day and age, but what, what has worked in the past? You know, what have artists done in the past? And of course, the Middle Ages and the Renaissance turns into all religious artwork. So in order to do it, in a way of walking the footsteps of an artist, uh, I decided to start doing those kinds of things then because it was being inundated with it. I think a lot of artists go through that same period where they, they really try to do that, and I think it's a, good, it's a good way to explore the art. It's different these days, of course, because we don't take religion on the same level as seriously as they did back then, and obviously I'm not getting paid by <laughs> the church to do this kind of work, so it wouldn't make that much sense to the artist from back then why I would want to do religious work now. <laughs> but for our day and age, of course, the context. We'll talk a little bit about how you actually see the rule of the artist. You talk about you know creating art with meaning. Uh, do you think the artist is relevant to American culture as far as communicating ideas or affecting the culture from within? I'm sure that there's, that there's plenty of instances of it. You know, maybe it's more subtle than what we realize. Um, you know, obviously we're, we're highly affected by, by images that, that come to us, even if we don't realize it, even if it's like subconsciously. Um, as far as, I mean, has anybody changed the face of it? You know, I mean, you mentioned Andy Warhol before, and you know, obviously his images were, were out there. And, and doing a lot of people's minds, you know, he definitely did change the way that they perceived art because he turned it into a, a commodity that, that could be produced. But then, of course, he gets the rap of people saying he doesn't make his own work. And then it's a whole nother conundrum, like, are you really an artist if you don't make your own work? And so he, he raises that question, you know, and it's a building process.